friends and welcome to your April 2020 horoscope where Taurus we're going to be rolling into some birthday time this month so happy birthday right out of the gate for the early Taurans that are going to be having a little shape up now we do have our ruling planet of Venus in Taurus as we're coming into the month so that is already beautiful it's helping us be a little bit magnetic that Taurus energy naturally ruled by the energy of Venus is just magnetic and beautiful and charming and maybe you're even shaping up your look or doing something that is of maximum benefit to this beautiful Taurus energy which will of course be uplifted as the sun on the 19th moves in as well now before we do jump in and start talking about all the good stuff in april if you happen to be watching this in march the 25th and the 26th i will be a part of a free webinar at astrologyhub.com everything's in the description box down below but we're talking about the five unique placements in your chart that you can use to start to see how to move towards your soul purpose at this time where many of us are experiencing quarantine you're at home you're filling yourself with information you're doing things you're learning a new path forward might as well use your chart to see the best specific way to get onto that path to get into what you're doing to maximize your energy so it's in the description box down below okay all right so right at the beginning of the month let's take note of a couple things let's see the lay of the land right so on the cosmic weatherscape that we've got going here one of the first things that we see is that you're still very eastern heavy so this is again a time for you here in april where you've got a personal independence peak you're moving forward you're pushing forward you're doing some things your way it's right before birthday time so this is very much so a time and a season in the general taurus where you can be in motion you have a purpose you're moving towards it it does mean you need to be in action and be active or at least be very very not only intuitive but intentional with the movements and the actions that you're taking as we come into the month we see that Mars and Saturn are both sitting up here in the energy of Aquarius so right at the top of your chart that gives me the indicator that Mars being up there in Aquarius is first of all a very social energy so whatever you're doing in your business even if you're having to do zoom meetings or you're doing something online or you're learning online or you're teaching or you're just doing business online collaborate 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 ask questions about new things learn about your technologies around you this is where your hustle your flow and your movement is really going to be very helpful for you now another thing i'm thinking of that's coming to me that i continue to be shown is that this is a month for advice people may be throwing you advice or they may be throwing you information now you're still in a personal independence peak so you're going to do what you want with that but from such a social energy which we are all steeped in right now we're steeped in a global social energy listen to information but then you've also got to take it back and decide which things especially in your career are going to be the very best social movements for you forward now Saturn being here means you are taking this seriously you may also be seeing in your life Taurus as of right now your friendship groups your organizational alignments your future plans are changing because those are the qualities of Aquarius they want to move things forward it's also a very friendly friendly energy so use your friendly Venus in Taurus magnetic personality and put yourself out there and allow these collaborations to come to you allow the work to come to you okay now on the third we're going to see Venus moving out of the energy of Taurus and she's going to move down into your second house in the energy of Gemini Venus in Gemini first of all Venus is your ruling planet so you're very comfortable with her orb and her motion and she does begin to move out of bounds here in April for most of the month right so what that means is that as Venus is moved out of bounds it means in your money in your second house your money your self-esteem your value your talents your skills the way you go out in the world and you make money your possessions your investments your relationships all of these things that have value to you you're gonna move a little bit out of bounds right maybe you're having to work differently than you ever have and you had in your life and you're moving out of bounds you're moving out of your comfort zone in order to make money maybe you're collaborating with people in a different way Gemini is a networking energy it's very social it's very engaging it gathers information maybe you're learning something differently that has value or you're teaching something that has value and you're doing it differently while Venus is out of bounds because she, when she moves out of bounds it means we've got to get out of our comfort zone so you could also be getting 
with Venus just in Gemini in general, different financial information or you're like learning a skill. You're learning something that allows you to go out and change the way that you bring benefit Venus to your money. So that's definitely a neat energy to pay attention to, but look outside of your bounds. It's not all straightforward this month, okay? Now at the same time, we're gonna see Neptune and Mercury in a conjunction, and this is gonna be happening in your 11th house. So one of the things that this makes me think of and it brings to my mind is first of all, Neptune and Mercury together in this deep conjunction, conjunction, this can be kind of a foggy energy. So things around organizations, social things, um, things maybe with your friends, things that are happening around long range plans or goals. Maybe you feel a little foggy about it because remember this is Pisces energy. We're not necessarily dealing with the highest of the intellect, but we're dealing with the highest of the intuition. So maybe you feel called to something, but you also feel a little bit out of alignment with the information around it. This is just a foggy couple days. The energy will move on. So don't worry about it, but I do want to give you that so that you can pay attention. It's not the best day to be engaging in making these really big deals unless just genuinely, intuitively, you can feel it is the right thing for you. Okay. On the fourth, we've got Jupiter and Pluto here dancing around in Capricorn in your ninth house energy, and they are together in their first of three conjunctions. They're going to come together um, for this year. Now, at this particular one, they are both out of retrograde, which is not going to be the case when we get to the next one. Pluto's heading into retrograde, and Jupiter will be right behind that. But at this one, they are both out of retrograde, first time together again in 13 years. So think back to us 13 years ago. Where did you have this supercharged energy? You took on something that was going to advance you, make you forward. It brought something bigger into your life. You had to die off Pluto in one way in order to live and to expand into something a different way. So what did that look like 13 years ago? Make sure you check out my Jupiter and Pluto conjunction video as well because I talk about my experience and get a lot more into the details of this particular um, set of aspects, all three of them that they make all year long. But this is your day here on the 4th to go on ahead and be supercharged, right? Take that action. You're driven. These are both out of retrograde. Move things forward. Where do you want to publish? Where do you want to market? Where do you want to broadcast? Where do you want to study something online? Where are you getting really steeped and invested in learning about the law, morals, ethics? This is an energy of faith, right? All things ninth house, higher education are certainly happening here. Now, the one little trick that you may have in there as well is we do have this transiting south node who's up here. And that seeks to keep you in behaviors that you're comfortable with. You've already seen them. You've already had them. There may be something that has been a part of your past. But ultimately, remember as well, this conjunction makes you driven enough to move past your past and move something forward. It's a forward motion that is available to you here in that ninth house. Now, as we continue on the month, we're going to get to the seventh. And we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy here of Libra. Now, this is going to end up being at 18 degrees of Libra, okay? The full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we need to create a shift here. The shift maybe is unconscious to you, subconscious for you. Here in the energy of Libra, it is lighting up your sixth house area. So this is the home of your daily routines, your daily hygiene. And your daily hygiene is not just brushing your teeth and your hair and doing all of that stuff, but it is also the daily hygiene of, do you have a daily schedule and routine in your life that makes sense? Or do you need to clean it up? Do you need to have an adjustment, an acknowledgement, or an ending to something around that? The sixth house is also work, especially freelance work. If you do something freelance or you're contracted, um, coworkers are here, right? And the sixth house is the house of health. This is health and wellness, and I also include mental health and wellness in here as well. The energy and the qualities of Libra say to us, Taurus, we need to make sure that this area is in balance. So this full moon is going to say, Taurus, hold on. Where, where are we in or out of balance with this area? 
in our lives, right? You've had this energy where you've had Venus already in your sign. Uranus is still in your sign. The sun soon will move down into your sign as well. So maybe this moon is also putting you in a position to say, in my daily health routines, am I making sure I'm moving enough? I'm a Taurus just like you. Sometimes we're not moving enough. We like them little snacks, you know what I mean? So it could be, am I moving enough? Am I doing things that are healthy? Do I have a healthy mind frame? Am I taking care of myself? Do I have a healthy work? Work. Remember, Mars is up here in the work sector. Do I have a healthy work routine? Ooh, Venus is traveling over here. Venus is the ruler of this moon being in Libra. Is your money healthy? So this is an opportunity to make adjustments, endings, or acknowledgement to something that may be out of balance, okay? Also on that day, we have got Mars and Uranus. So we've got Mars up here in the 10th house. We've got Uranus down here in your first house. And these two are in a square with each other. When Mars and Uranus square each other, a square says, I'm going to put you under pressure because we need to take some action here. So something in your business life, something in how you're doing business, something in maybe a collaboration could be feeling tense or feeling like it's under pressure or it is the thing that feels out of balance maybe. And this may be where you are directed to take action because under a square we will take action to relieve the tension that is there so look for that as we travel with this moon and of course there'll be a separate moon video out for all of the details as well now on the ninth we see venus who is here in the energy of gemini and she's not ready to retrograde or anything yet but on the ninth she enters her shadow phase her pre-retrograde phase so she's beginning to slow down a little bit and get ready for her retrograde now this is going to be in your second house so why do we care about that first of all we care because what happens when you're traveling along, things are going well, and all of a sudden it feels like money is starting to show up slowly. You're, you're feeling like you're, it's taking you longer to get your projects done. Um, it's taking longer to have an idea of how to use your creative talents, right? That is under this energy, or maybe you made that phone call or put that resume out, and you just still haven't heard back. Well, as of the 9th, all the way until May 13th, Venus is in her pre retrograde time her shadow phase so you may start get some inklings of things that you're gonna work on during the retrograde but also things are slowing down your relationships are maybe slowing down your money is maybe slowing down the benefits of what you're doing you maybe don't even see those until May they are slowing down but it doesn't mean don't continue to progress forward now the full retrograde is going to happen from May 13th until June so we'll talk more about that next month so on okay? the 11th we're gonna see mercury moving out of the energy of Pisces and moving into the energy of Aries just up there now now, Mercury in Aries, and I laugh all the time because my husband has this placement. So when he says something, I'm like, oh my God, he's going to say something. He's here to win. You know what I mean? But Aries in, or Mercury in Aries in this particular position for you, Taurus, is in the 12th house. So truly, truly, this could be a time with Mercury in Aries, Taurus, that you're saying something that needs to be said. You are identifying information, 12th house, that has maybe been hidden, or you've been working on something behind the scenes, and now you're really getting the information about it. You're having these conversations. You're making decisions about it. You're deciding how that project is going to move forward, because it's things that are happening in a hidden place. This is also the home of beautiful transitions like we transition some things out because we're done with it what have you learned what are you no longer willing to speak and talk about how what you know what are you no longer willing to um bring to the consciousness of people have you gotten new ideas is your spirit lifted in some way and you're wanting to bring a different conversation to the table because it would be a creative spiritual awakening that happened that now you're going to take that um, mercury and aries energy and speak it into existence put it into existence make some decisions around it now we have this energy all the way until april 27th before mercury moves down into your sign okay on the 19th we see the sun Moving on, getting into the energy of Taurus. So happy, happy birthday, my Taurus friends and fellows. This is light. This is heat. This is vitality. This is Taurus season. Okay, now as you can see, we've got Uranus over here. So Taurus, many of us have been shaken, not stirred. Okay, it's brought a lot of changes to the Taurus body, to the Taurus mind frame, to the Taurus routine. Now we bring the sun into this energy as well. And it's like... We're motivated. Taurus, you are motivated 
for a new year. You are motivated for your next set of actions. And even if you're not motivated in the way that Aries gets motivated, where you're ready to run and hit the ground and you're doing all this stuff, you are motivated to create sustainable, enduring, practical, dependable, beautiful things in your life and in your world. And you are motivated to be a part of helping things sustain and grow as well. You're literally taking yourself in a motivated way out into the world and offering yourself as the goddess that you are. So it's a beautiful sun energy. And remember, we've also looked over where some things were not in balance. So you're feeling a little bit mot more motivated to get yourself in alignment as well. It's an absolutely lovely, lovely energy. Okay, on the 22nd, we're going to have a new moon happening in Taurus as well. So happy birthday. There's your little gift. But the new moon is where we're going to plant those seeds of intention to begin something new. And it doesn't mean it's a new project. It means we're going to bring a fresh perspective. It can be a new project. But this is your fresh start, your fresh beginning happening here under the new moon in Taurus. So plant those seeds of intention, Taurus. What do you want to see for the next four weeks develop? And ultimately, where do you want that to fit? Fit into your next year. On the 25th, we're going to see Pluto up here in the energy of Capricorn heading into retrograde. Now, I'll make a separate video on that as well so we can really get into the details of it. But Pluto is going to be retrograde at 25 degrees of Capricorn for the next five months. Now, when Pluto retrogrades, you're going to go back over this Capricorn area. This is not new information. You have seen it. You have been looking at it in this ninth house. Publishing, broadcasting, your reputation, sales, marketing, putting that book out there, higher education, training, any of these things you've already been looking at. Now, as Pluto goes back and retrograde, you're going to review this area again and say, okay, I've made this project and I've made this progress what needs to continue to die off from it so that it can really live big and abundantly? The ninth house is an expansion house. So this is your chance to go back and review transformations, evolutions that need to come to the table. Pluto retrogrades for five months so that we don't all fall off the planet trying to evolve. So you have time to look back over this area, but just know you really are looking back at something that's already in place You've already been working on it, but now you're going to get some fresh eyes on it and you're going to let some piece of it die off so that something else can live very big and healthy and evolved and abundant. As we also close out and get to the end of this month, we're going to see Mercury heading the road, coming down here into the energy of Taurus. Now, Mercury in Taurus, first of all, it makes you very gabby. You could be having a lot of conversations. If you're collaborating with people, goodness knows you've got a lot of conversations going on. You could have information coming at you, right? You could be sharing information. It could be like the Taurus explosion of information is happening, but also in true Taurus fashion, our conversations will be slow. They will be beautiful. There's maybe music happening. They are going to be, um, this is an, an energy here because when Mercury comes into Taurus, Mercury likes to move so fast. In Taurus, we're not about that life. So we're moving more slowly. You could also feel like you're having to work a little bit harder to do something or to get something out there. But ultimately, Mercury is still working for your benefit all the way until May 11th, okay? All right, Taurus, I think it's going to be a good month. I think it has the opportunity to be a productive month. You're at the beginning of your, your annual restart, where you want to go, what you want to do. And you also are going to begin this journey where you get to go back over and see what to shed, what to rebalance, so that you can, as we go forward, really be moving and thriving as abundantly as is possible right where you're at. It's about your circumstance. It doesn't mean that everybody's got the circumstances that feel the happiest. It's about growing where you are so that we can go to the next place, okay? Especially before we do begin the um, Venus retrograde as we head into May. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you on the webinar and I hope to see you around this channel. So I love you and I will see you next month. Bye everyone.